I have heard that the new 2020.48.26 update makes a lot of changes to the display screen. I figured I would measure the width of the two windows on the screen before the update and compare. The original left side driver info is 4 and 3 16 inches wide or 10.6 centimeters and the right side is 8 and 13 16 wide or 22.4 centimeters. This update started rolling out this past weekend and I got alerted to my upcoming update just a few minutes ago. As of the time of this video editing on December 28th, about 26% of Model 3 owners have received this update. It took about 24 minutes for the system update to download and install. The system is now rebooting after the update. Now that the system software update has completed, let's see what we have. It's taking a little while for all the display items to come up. I caught a little discrepancy on this release notes page. It says 2020.48.25, but on the software menu, it says 2020.48.26. I'm not sure why that happened. The first change is that the release notes are now summarized in a menu on the left hand side and then you can click on each item to get an overview. The next item is driving visualization improvements and I'll show that in two different sections coming up. Scheduled departure now has options for setting electric utility time of use off peak hours. You can now precondition the battery even if unplugged. When at supercharger locations, you will see the number of available charging stalls now. Click on the amenity icon to quickly search for nearby amenities. The last section is the vehicle information. There is no longer a Tesla T button on the middle of the top of the screen. The information that it used to provide is now in the main menu. Tap the car button on the far left of the bottom bar and then tap software. And yes, after the update, the driver's screen is now 5 and 3 8 inches wide, or 13.7 centimeters. And the right side has shrunk to 7 and 5 8 inches wide, or 19.4 centimeters. So yes, the left side is now 28% wider. Quite significant. This is a good demonstration of the difference between the old and new screens. You can see that I am morphing between the old and new and back to the old so that you can see the changes. The car control menu screen for the most part is the same. I'll scroll through the different options and show you. On the software page, you can see that it's still downloading additional updates. Uh, this update had also included three new games, and it shows that they are downloading right now. Let's go over some of the changes on the screen. The top status bar no longer has the Tesla T button that I mentioned earlier, but the other icons are the same. The car avatar has now changed from an overhead view in park to a front three-quarter view. The buttons for the front, trunk, and charge port are still there. There is now a duplicate lock-unlock button over the car. The car doors will also display if they are opened or closed. Press the front open and it animates opening. And press the trunk open and it animates opening. Flipping back to the old screen, the buttons below the car are relocated or removed. The microphone button is now gone, and the only way to activate it is to press the right steering wheel button. The charge button is gone, but it is now incorporated into the charge port button on the car avatar. When you press it, the charge port opens and the charge menu comes up 
on the right half of the screen. There is also a charge button in the bottom of the bar's pop-up menu. In this area, you can still swipe the info cards. Swipe left to reach the tire pressures card, and swipe right to reach the odometer and trip meters. When you're in drive, it looks a little bit different. And now we have reached the last major area, the bottom bar. The old one had 12 buttons, and now there are 14. The most notable change is that the old bar was black, and now it is light gray. The car settings icon and the music icon are the same. As I mentioned earlier, the camera button has moved here from under the car. The wiper button has also moved next to it. Pressing this pop-up menu button reveals that the choices are the same as they were previously. Oddly, the camera button here is duplicated. There's another one in the bottom bar. How did Tesla not notice this? The energy button is next. It works just like before for consumption estimates and trip tracking. The charging button brings up the same screen as pressing the charge port door on the car avatar. The web browser doesn't look like it changed. Let's go back to the software page and see how the updates are going. Well, it looks like they're done. Open the pop-up menu again and go to Entertainment and then under Arcade. The first being the Battle of Polytopia, then Solitaire, and then Cat Quest. In Toy Box, there's a new feature called Boombox, but it is not available on my car since it is a 2018. Late 2019 cars have a pedestrian alert speaker under the front right bumper area. Without a speaker, the Boombox app will not work. Boombox will let you play MP3 files and you can associate them with driving and honking the horn, among other things. I wanted to mention that there are scheduling features that are located in the HVAC menu. Press the fan button on the bottom row. The schedule can be set for preheating the car. Here's an example of one of the car avatar animations. While driving, the visualizations have also changed. All of the indicator lights, including the PRND lights, are now vertically listed on the far left of the screen. I also noticed that the battery bar has changed colors. It used to be green, now it's black. Another thing I wish Tesla would do on the screen is to have percent and miles remaining for the battery pack at the same time. The speedometer has moved to the far left side of the driver display. I would have preferred it to be larger. The autopilot icon, set speed, and speed limit icons are now in a line to the right of the speedometer. Now I'm going to drive the car so that you can see the driving visualizations. I will not be making any comments until the end of the video.
I hope you have enjoyed this video. There may be more things that I have missed. If you know of any, please leave a message in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.